Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Joe. I'm also Joe. You are so out of screen. Get Wait. over it. <laughs> Center yourself a little, man. It, anyway. I sit in the crook of the couch. The couch is off center. <laughs> Welcome to recap number yeah, 70. Here center. we are. I mean, you're not in your crack. Well, you, I, I am. Actually, actually, yeah, 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 the the couch is off center. I wonder if somebody kicked a cord and moved the God, this makes great recap episode shit right here, doesn't it? Anyway, today we're covering the Flintstones, MLBPA, NBA Jam, Wolfenstein 3D, Star Trek, the next generation, futures past. If I was looking at that list of five games, I would say there's probably two thumbs up in there, wouldn't you? Two at best, at best. I think there is two thumbs up. There, there. are two thumbs up. That's a secret. Look out. First up, we got the Flintstones. Oh, now, well. I was not here for this. You were not here for the Flintstones. This already doesn't look great, though. Actually, it wasn't awful. Um, the Flintstones, the graphics were good. The animations were good. The music was all right. The only real complaint I had about the game is that from the overworld map, you roll a dice, basically, to move around. And that just doesn't make sense. Like, you, you, so you roll a dice to move, and then you go from around these levels to find the one guy in each area you're supposed to find, and then you have to beat him at some kind of game. A race, I think, the first two areas were. And... It, it just the random movement was the only thing that I really didn't care for. Otherwise, I think the game actually looked, sounded, and played fine. It was a completely functional platformer, unlike the Looney Tunes games, which looked amazing but played like garbage. Right. Um, you weren't here for the Bugs Bunny one. It it played awful, uh, but very much. But, but here you go. This is the random dice roll. Well, I rolled a one, so I got to move one space. It's just like, but why? Like there's just there's just no reason for it. It just forces you to play levels. I'm like, if you want to force me to play levels, just force me to play the f- levels. And don't make me roll a die. Because it just seems dumb. Yeah. Because then if you roll a die later and you're going down like in a circle, you have to replay those levels. Let me beat the level once, mark it like in Mario World or something, and then just let me go past it if I want to. It seems uh, a little ridiculous. But yeah, the, the game, other than that, was a completely functional platform and I actually enjoyed it. So, thumbs up for the Flintstones. Uh, I was impressed, actually. Uh, next up was MLBPA Baseball. <laughs> I think not counting Pit Fighter, this is the shortest stream we've had. Uh, yeah, probably. So we... The game actually didn't look awful. No, I like, think the game looked really good. Actually. Yeah. It so looked you, good. You got this announcer here. You got decent sprite work inside of the game. Good use of color. Everything looked fine. You didn't have... Even though it's called MLBPA, Major League Baseball Players Association, they didn't have licensing, so there actually weren't official teams. It was St. Louis versus Chicago. The walking animation coming up is good. The shading on the guy's clothes are good. The field looks nice. The movement's smooth and fluid. And and the game, unfortunately, breaks down uh, right here. So we played the game for, I think we struggled with it for like 20 minutes, 20, 25 so. minutes. Um, and what occurred is every time whoever was at bat would hit the ball, like that's great right there, the, the hit you animation, um, we couldn't get back to the pitcher's mound. We, you, it would go to the fielding, and then we couldn't get back to this screen right here. So, like, for instance, and I'm not sure where exactly I pulled this clip out of, Joey hit a foul ball at one point because you were up first to bat, I think. Mm-hmm. And the ball disappeared into the crowd. And that was it. We couldn't get out of the fielding view. We couldn't get back to the batter's eye. Uh, and there and was... The, the thing is, it doesn't... Like, you caught the ball. Your AI caught the ball once. Yeah. And, and it, it went immediately back to the pitcher's mound, which is fine. But basically, as soon yeah, as soon as it goes into fielding view, yeah. it doesn't go back. And this is it. And you can see uh, on the bottom corner there, the, the bases... Joey's got both of his guys standing on the base. And he couldn't move them. We went through the manual. We couldn't find anything about how to get back to the batting screen. And that's it. And we reset and we try, We thought, oh, well, maybe this is just a bad game and there's a glitch there. And so we reset and we tried it, I think, three more times. And it froze at the fielding screens. And, it, I mean, the game looks frozen. It's not frozen. We found, like, we were able to move guys yeah, around. Yeah, you're able to move around. The screen is but frozen, though. We like just the couldn't play the camera. game. And so it was 110% thumbs down. Not a good game. Don't recommend. Not worth your effort. 
it was really disappointingly bad. So thumbs down for MLBPA. Next up, we got NBA Jam. Um, I mean, there's not much to say about this. This was an amazing four-player arcade game when it was made. It was one of the most popular arcade game ports ever outside of like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Uh, the sprite work is decent. The colors are good. The movement is fluid. The gameplay is solid. It's a good game. I think we both ended up thumbing this game up yeah. as well. Yeah, this was a solid two thumbs up. And, and the only reason I wouldn't recommend getting NBA Jam is because I would recommend getting NBA Jam Tournament Edition. It's it's just this game uh, kind of beefed up a little. Yeah, they it, took anything that they could find. Yeah, the, and this game ma- improved it. Yeah, so like this game is a solid thumbs up. If you, if you're looking for an NBA Jam game, you can't go wrong with either. Go for Tournament Edition if you find it. But if you pick up the regular one, no harm done. That's a thumbs up game right there. Like that's a good two player game. It's multi tap compatible, so we could do four players, which would actually probably be kind of entertaining i think agree um yeah so that's a definite thumbs up here's a surprise hit for us though uh wolfenstein 3d is probably like the great grandfather of modern fps and i played it when i was maybe 12 13 years old didn't really remember it and it got ported to the N- the SNES. And what's funny is, when you look at FPS games that got ported to this the SNES, uh, Doom is like the only other one. I mean, we played Faceball Two Thousand, which was which awful FPS ish, but it was awful. And Doom, it chokes hard, like frame rate issues, crazy. Plus, they cut like almost all the content. The out controller of, it. of an SNES is not not conducive, yeah, to FPS. But, for what it is, like, Wolfenstein, I think the, the graphics ported over fairly well. Yes, they're extremely pixelated. Yeah. But the fact is, the original game was extremely pixelated. That's just the graphics they had to work with at the time. So, this is like a straight port. They didn't try to actually improve the graphics. There's like, look, it was hella pixelated. It's hella I pixelated. Think it, I think it's simple enough that it got away with the controller. Yeah. I feel like it, the control setup... Could have probably been a little bit better. Yes, I would have liked to have changed the button layout. Um, Because strafe was L and R, whereas turn was your left and right on your D-pad. And I think forward and strafe on your D-pad would have been more natural. Mm -hmm. And then L and R for your actual turning. Uh, But otherwise, the game functioned just fine. It looked okay. Most importantly... It actually ran decent. Yeah, um, there was no slowdown. I had a lot of fun playing it. Yeah, actually. it was it was surprisingly entertaining to play, and it still had the map capability, so you could pull up the map. Uh, it was surprisingly fun, and it's it's pretty. Uh, we looked it up, and it's actually like fifty bucks or something, which surprised me. I thought it would be super cheap because no one would want it, but but I guess that goes to speak of what we're saying is the game yeah. was actually fairly entertaining to play. So we both gave it a thumbs up. Uh, kind of surprising. So that's three thumbs up. But then we come to this beauty right here, Star Trek The Next Generation, Future's Past. Now look, he's laughing. Uh, for what it is, I, I'm i thoroughly impressed at the visuals for the time. Like, that bit... The pixel art is good. Yeah, the pixel and art is solid. you can tell who everyone is. Yes, they did the likenesses, so there you saw Data... And then I don't know who the ensign is. Generic ensign A. Uh, and I yeah, here we're going to spin around. And bam, there's Jonathan Frakes, Patrick Stewart, Michael Dorn. I know the actors' names. Uh, <laughs> and they did really well with the likenesses in that pixel art area. It's very in-depth. Like, I'm in the computer. You, you can look things up. Uh, you can access the menus. It's got the Star Trek, like, beeps and boop sounds. It's got all the techno battle in it. Um, but I know I'm almost certain there's a piece of, uh, an away mission in here. Cause that's, uh, that's clearly like the big part of the game, yeah. I think, is the away missions. So when you go onto these ships or planets, you get to pick an away team. Cause that's a big part of the show too. It's always, oh, you know, four or five of the guys beam over somewhere. Uh, and, and then they go. So in this one you get... I think 
I think the captain's the only one you can't take. Um, but you can basically take any other main member of the cast along with some random red shirt ensigns with you. And you go on these away missions to essentially solve problems. Uh, the very first one was killing a couple Romulans. And then the second one, you just had to show up at a planet and deliver medical supplies. Uh, the third one, which is, I think, what this clip is from, you, we go onto this derelict ship and we have to basically fix the ship. Uh, after that, there was one in some mines. We had to save some miners. And... I think the away mission is where the game yes, loses I think... traction, really. Because otherwise, it's a just a pretty simple simulation game of it, Star it, Trek. It does have some Wing Commander-esque combat. Uh, in space, so once you do get attacked, it looked better than you do get to go fight. It looked like I wouldn't have struggled with it, but I don't know. Watching you do the away missions, the away missions, is, it's not linear. There's no hints. It yeah. like I, you were doing things and you knew what to do because you had looked it up and played it earlier and played it yeah. before. And I was like, I don't think I would have made the ever the like, yeah made the of connection logic. of like oh, this is a shelf that you can open yeah, way it, in the back of the ship. It did not handhold you very well. Um, and, and the way missions, I think, is a primary part of this game, too. Like, it's a solid 50% of the game, if not probably more. The pixel art and the away missions, the sprites are kind of clunky. You can definitely still tell who the characters are. Um, currently, we're in night vision mode because the power in the spaceship we just went to is turned off, and you have to turn it back on. In the end, this game was okay at best. If you're a big Trek fan, I think it's worth getting. But he's not a Trek fan. I am, but even then, like, eh? So, yeah, unfortunately, this one's getting a thumbs down, unless you're a huge Trek head. Yep. And, and that's just kind of where we're at. So we did get three thumbs up. The Flintstones, shockingly good. NBA Jam, obviously good. And Wolfenstein, a pleasant surprise for as old as it is. Uh, but that is our seventh... Seven, 70th recap so so many games dude so three, 350 games down a few just a few that's a lot uh, and that means only like 370 more to go <laughs> just three more years of this <laughs> three more years of this year you're out um so yeah that's it guys thanks a lot we appreciate everybody who lurks and watches and subs to the youtubes and checks us out on twitch when we stream and uh, i mean that's it man just thank you very much everybody have a good night thanks for joining us see you guys